everybody. Welcome to episode 262 of a wrestling gal podcast, providing you with the female perspective on all things wrestling. Join me, your host and wrestling enthusiast, Ella J. As today, I am joined by the clairvoyant of evil, Gypsy Mac. Now let's chat. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm joined by the clairvoyant of evil, Gypsy Mac. So how are you doing today? I'm really good. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic to be speaking with you. I mean, even before we get into everything, you just told me before we got started that you just recently moved. So how has it been moving into your new place and everything? It's been hard. (laughs) I I believe it. Yeah. I'm never here. So like, luckily I've been able to kind of like unpack everything, but I like haven't been able to decorate. So I'm huge on having like a personal space and making it my own. So right now I have this beautiful blank wall that I'm working with. (laughs) Which I feel like is the contrast to the spooky bitch that you embody. So like, what are some of the things going through your mind right now of possible like decoration ideas? So I usually have this beautiful tapestry that I have wherever I film. And that's really cool. I also got like this, um, it's like a light set. It's like LED lights and it's like mm-hmm. moons and stars. It looks really pretty. It's kind of like the ones that you have in the background. Yeah, I have a moon set, but it's over there, not this one, because it's not long enough. So I, it wouldn't even be able to fit in like in all of the frame anyways. But I feel like that's very your vibe and very your aesthetic. So we'll get into that in a bit. But one thing that I honestly like really love about you is that you project what you want into the universe, which goes alongside with manifesting and all of that. So what are some things right now that you have been been by that you've been very projecting into the universe? What do you want right now, Gypsy? Right now, I just want to get out of the Southwest and the West Coast region. I'm trying to go to the East Coast and make moves over there because I feel like I've only worked in Florida. So that's like a little tiny start. East Coast is up my, I'm Northeast. So um, hopefully you make your way over here soon. Yeah, I've seen you a lot, obviously, in the Southwest, the Midwest and Florida too. What are some spots then or some states or promotions then that you kind of been eyeing? I feel like you definitely have to checked out some New Jersey and like the New York area I keep seeing a lot I there's a few promotions one of them is Combat Sports United it's different than wrestling but it's like mixed martial arts almost it looks like it would be tough but really fun it's something that interests me because I like grappling and stuff like that so I want to give that like a try yeah, CFU, the undisputed first ever champion was Masha Slamovich. And I have a couple friends who work in that promotion. It's like a cool mix between pro wrestling and like MMA, which I know you have experience in both. So I feel like you would definitely fit in there really well. Yeah, I've like seen all the girls that work there. And I know a few of them, like Masha, I worked with her in Cali. Yeah. And she's how I actually saw it. And I was like, oh, she's badass. I'm like, I would love to get in there with her. We got to get you up here in the Northeast. I will say like New Jersey, New York, like Philly, like that tri-state area is like a big hub for pro wrestling right now. And I wish I lived closer to it. It's just, there's so much going on there and, but you have so many different options too of where you want to work, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Hopefully soon I'm booked out until like, I think the end of the spring. So if I go, it wouldn't be until like the beginning of fall or winter. Okay. Booked and busy. We like to see it though. Yeah. Oh, so just in time for spooky season. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. You'll have to make your way up here. It might be a little bit colder up here in the fall and winter. I don't know how you feel about that. You seem, or I've seen you a lot in like beach settings or like hotter (laughs) weather. So how do you think you would conform to the colder temperatures? I actually hate the hot. (laughs) Oh, thank God. Thank God. Yes. Okay. I'm on that same wavelength with you. I hate the hot as well. Oh my God. No. I'm going to Arizona tomorrow and everyone's like, it's like 107. (laughs) Call me in February of next year. And that's when I'll go is when it's still kind of cold. 
Yeah. Thank you. I feel like everybody prefers like the hot, especially with the summer coming up. I am just, I feel like I can't get anything done. And it just like the heat is just not for me. Mm -mm. I agree with you. Like I tell my boyfriend all the time, let's move to New York. And he wants to, but he hates the cold and hates snow. So we will see. Have you gotten, this is maybe a dumb question. I know you like lived in New Mexico and you're like very based in the Southwest and like West coast. Have you gotten to experience snow yourself yet in your life? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. (laughs) So the part of New Mexico I grew up in is actually closer to Colorado. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Which a lot of people, (laughs) most people think because New Mexico is desert, it doesn't snow, but it actually does like up North. Okay, that, that's good, too. And I mean, you've moved around a bit your, in your life now, too. And I feel like reflecting back on your life so far, maybe something the universe has granted you, what are a few things that you are maybe personally or professionally just proud of in your life so far? Wrestling in general. <laughs> it's uh, something that I've loved ever since I was a little kid. And when I turned about 23, I wanted to give a crack at it and none of the schools in the area wanted to train me because I was female. Yeah. So I felt like it was something that was kind of, is it gatekeeped from me? And I wasn't like allowed to be in the business just because of my gender. So I felt like that in general is a huge accomplishment for me. And you've been proving people wrong. I've heard you say this. You've been proving people wrong. And like that's one of your favorite things. And now you're out here doing it. I mean, you've held multiple championships. You've made your way across the a little bit of the state so far. And you're hopefully traveling soon to the, the Northwest and the East Coast, which I think is something to be super proud of. Yeah, I agree. Especially too, I'm like still the only female that trains at my training camp. And I wish there would be more. I feel most people are scared to get into the business they hear all the bad things and people getting taken advantage of and stuff and luckily I feel in the last couple of years it's changed a lot it definitely has I mean there's obviously been some crazy events over the last couple years especially during the pandemic itself too um but pro wrestling I feel like is one of those things that I mean it is very difficult and I feel like not a lot of people might know like everything that goes on behind the curtains but it also has been very empowering and rewarding to a lot of people that I've spoken with I agree one of my biggest goals in life when I'm old and I've done everything that I want to do is I want to open an all women's wrestling school I feel like that would be really fun I know there's a couple of promotions out there but I feel like a school would really help to point them in the right direction and actually lead the next generation the right way. Especially too, because I feel like there would be like different teaching styles too, from like a woman's perspective in like how you teach somebody. And like, I feel like they have more of the behind the scenes and backstage like input, but also the in ring like etiquette and all of that stuff that goes into it that I feel like sometimes you can't gauge from your male counterparts. I agree. It's been nice having a couple of female friends in the business that have been around because. I asked my trainer, I'm like, what do I do about this situation? He's like, I don't, I don't know. I've never been in that situation. And I'm like, ah, this, this sucks. Yeah. So we're all about girl power here on a wrestling gal. So maybe who are some of those people personally or professionally who kind of motivate you or empower you, you think? Maserati out in Las Vegas is amazing. I would say that she's probably one of the people that I'm closest to. She's been in the business for a little bit, knows what she's doing, been around the world. So luckily I have her to talk to whenever I have questions. She's definitely one too. I mean, I've seen her in FSW. She's been down in Florida too, as well, obviously ring of honor for a bit. And I feel like she's, she's very underrated too. I mean, she's been around, but I feel like, like she is just one who's been really blossoming over the last couple. Um, but I feel like another cool thing about you is obviously you practice tarot in real life. So how did you become involved in that? Or like what really piqued your interest about it initially? I have an auntie that's super into witchcraft and she's a pagan. So it's always been something I've been around my entire life. I moved in with her during the pandemic and she's the one that kind of taught me and gave me my first tarot deck. And she actually helped me expand Gypsy into who I am today, which is really cool because without her, I feel like I would be missing kind of that element to myself. 
which element of yourself do you mean the like the more tarot or like spiritual side or embodying embodying that I just like want to get a clearer picture of it because I think it's really fascinating yeah like definitely when I first came into the business I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do but I've always been into witchcraft and that kind of stuff and tarot and astrology but I never had anyone to kind of turn to so during the pandemic, when I lived with my auntie, she kind of brought out that spiritual side of me. So I just started to incorporate that into Gypsy today. Yeah. And I mean, you are a pro wrestler now, a tarot card. I'm very curious though, like what was your childhood career aspirations? Like was either of those even on your mind when you were growing up envisioning what you were going to be when you were older? Actually, yes. I okay. wanted to be a wrestler when I was younger, but growing up, everyone knows how wrestling was in the attitude era for women. And I was like, I'm not ever going to look like Trish Stratus or look like these beautiful models. I'm like, I'm not going to go and I'm like, I'm not going to do that. It's too much for me. So I'm, I'm simple and I'm here to like kick ass. <laughs> so I didn't think that was ever going to be an aspect. So it's something that was in the back of my mind, but I wanted to be a cosmetologist and that's what I went to school for. I mean, eyeliner on point. So I can see Thank that you. now what? Okay. So I feel like there's a lot of avenues to cosmetology. I, was it more makeup, skincare? Like, isn't, I feel like there's like different, I don't know what they're called branches, subgroups of cosmetology. Like, did you have like a focus or Genres. was it? <laughs> yeah. Did you have like a focus in there or was it just like all around? My love was definitely makeup okay. and I really liked to color hair I hated cutting hair all throughout school I hated it I still hate it to this day I hate cutting it <laughs> but it's so hard to only be a colorist or just a makeup artist especially in New Mexico there's not a big avenue for it and so I just kind of stuck to makeup I worked at Sephora for a little bit but I didn't love it like I thought I was going to and that makes sense. I've seen you too with many different hair colors. I mean, we got you with the purple here today. We've seen the red. I think I've seen some blue in there too. Do you have, I feel like we've all had like hair horror stories, like with coloring it or cutting it. Do you have like one in particular that really stands out to you? Uh, so this one's horrible, but I decided to get like widow peak bangs when I was like my first year in cosmetology school. I thought it was the coolest thing. And I look back on it and I had Vegeta's haircut. Like I had Vegeta's hairline and it was just so bad. I don't know why I did that to myself. I understand that when I was younger too, like in dance, like, you know, just know you cut your own bangs and then you cut them shorter and shorter and shorter because they're just so uneven. Like they were probably like to hear. And I, granted, I was like maybe nine or 10, but still it was not a look. You can't even clip it back when it's no, that short. No. You're, yeah. It was just horrible. I don't <laughs> even remember what I did after that. But yeah, I never should have had a pair of scissors when I was that young, especially too. But I feel like we've all done that, like cut our hair and then it's just a mess. Which makes Every sense. time I... <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, like I feel like most girls therapy is their hair. Yeah. And I, and I get that too, which makes sense why you don't really want to cut hair. I get that. I mean, on ourselves, it's just sometimes it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, going along with like your tarot card readings, what do you think are maybe some misconceptions people may have about tarot card reading or witchcraft along those sorts? My favorite in tarot is the death card. Everyone is always like, oh my God, I'm going to die or something. But I'm like, no, it's just the end of something. And it's going to bring like beautiful new beginnings and everyone gets scared with that. They think diving into it is evil or bad, but it's really not. It's more spiritual than anything. It's using what the universe is giving you to guide yourself in this journey we call life. And that makes sense too. I find it. Okay. I think it's a tarot card too. I think on your right arm, is it a tarot card tattoo? And yeah. which one is it? I'm very fascinated to, like, I saw it. I was like, I think it's a tarot card. So which one is it specifically for you? So this one's kind of a cute story. It's the fool. Okay. It's for my cat Atticus oh. because he's a fool and he's always like doing stuff without thinking about the consequences. Like he loves to get in the sink and it'll be full and he gets wet and he's mad and he'll yell at me about it. And I'm like, why did you do this to yourself? <laughs> 
And the full represents jumping into things without thinking about the consequences. Which makes sense. I feel like we've all done that definitely before. T- <laughs> <laughs> it happens in life. So I think it's a, it's a cute tattoo because it's for my cat, but it also just mm-hmm. reminds me that sometimes it's okay to do these things and it's okay to learn from stuff like that and be a fool sometimes everybody makes mistakes everybody has those days if you catch my drift (laughs) and on your on your other arm I think it's a dagger or what exactly I'm very curious by it too see to me okay maybe it is a strawberry am I just like look okay I've never seen like a combination like that for, for like that before so like what is the story behind that one my favorite band is Dance Gavin Dance. Okay. And they have a whole song, like, trilogy, I guess you would call it, called uh, Strawberry Swisher. The last song, which is my favorite song, is called Death of a Strawberry. So that's what this represents, is the dagger stabbing the strawberry. Now, which one was your first tattoo that you ever got? Um. So actually, they're on my chest. Okay. So it's a mother and a daughter and a father and a daughter. And my parents are huge in my life. They've always pushed me to do what I want to do, especially with wrestling. Like my mom was Sting one year for Halloween growing up. So when I wanted to do wrestling, yes, I'm like, thank you, mom, for letting me be weird. (laughs) But yeah, she, uh, you know, they always push me to do what I have to do and they support me. They go and watch me wrestle and they live so far from any wrestling because it's about two hours away from the big city that I live in right now see oh man I feel like too that's really special too especially you seem like very family oriented would you say yeah I am it kind of sucks because I don't get to see them as often especially now with traveling Mm -hmm. I feel like that's definitely something to have heard from a lot of wrestlers because you're on the road too and especially too with like all the stuff going on with COVID right now too it probably can't help it either Yeah, it's really hard. Um, Like recently, the city that they live in, the wildlife area caught on fire. So it was kind of hectic. And right now it's like the biggest fire in New Mexico's history out in Mora County, which is really unfortunate. Luckily, my parents haven't been affected, but I had a couple of family members that lived in that area that have. So that has also been really hard because I wasn't able to see them when it got super bad. It was kind of out of town and it sucks when stuff like that happens but when you're doing your dreams you kind of have to sacrifice yeah I mean especially too in pro wrestling where you're sacrificing like family time personal time like a lot of social life because you're on the road and plus you do your other tarot readings and all of that too it's probably got to be overwhelming sometimes I would imagine yeah it happens a lot and there's a lot on your plate but you kind of learn how to spread yourself throughout all of your areas it makes sense too and I mean you mentioned too that you do tarot and you're very into astrology and witchcraft how do you feel about crystals I love crystals I have a couple in my house at all times I have a crystal collection so I'm very interested to know like what are some of the few ones that you keep in your house and why I always keep a rose quartz in my house. It's the heart chakra, which is my birth month. So I always keep that one. Just I help feel like it helps balance me. And then I also like to keep black onyx just to help keep negative energy away. I always keep that with me on the road too. Yeah. Black obsidian is one with my uh, zodiac sign and it's like blocking out the negative energy and all of that. Which sign are you? I'm a Libra. I actually have a Libra tattoo. Okay. I'm a Scorpio. I'm on the cusp between a Libra and Scorpio. So I'm October 26th. Okay. I'm October 6th. Okay. You love so I'm to right see it. right in the beginning. That's the yeah. best month of the year, Gypsy, honestly. And it's also spooky season. It's spooky month. Exactly. So I feel like <laughs> that makes sense why you're a spooky bitch. You were born a spooky bitch, Gypsy. Exactly. That's what I tell everyone all the time. Like October is not just like my, like not just my birthday, it's my Mm -hmm. birth month. So every day is a holiday for me. (laughs) And like the weather, honestly, for me, like October is perfect in the fall too. Like you got the crisp weather. It's not too hot. It's like very like fifties, sixties. It's like perfect for me, at least I feel like. I agree. I'm a big sweater 
person. Yeah. Like I was just complaining on Twitter. I think it was yesterday because <laughs> I I'm still trying to rock the sweaters. I'm trying to find thinner ones as we go, but it's not working. <laughs> So am I like I will stupidly like wear like long sleeve shirts or like sweatshirts in my house when I definitely shouldn't be and then I'm complaining that I'm sweating but also I'm just like a like bulky I don't know how to explain it like I just like wearing layers it's just in me it's it's comfy I want to be comfortable and that's why I hate the hot because it's not comfortable ever it it's not as they say I mean you you can only take so many things off but if you're cold you can just layer up exactly but to each their own I guess too but I mean like talking about clothing and gear too I'm a big fan of like all of your ring gears but I'm very curious to like know maybe the inspiration or story behind your pink and black gear which I think is my favorite it's your profile photo too as well it's actually Melina from Mortal Kombat okay I always thought she was super badass when I was younger and when I had the option to start making my own fighting clothes and like wrestling clothes I was like I would love to do like a cosplay kind of thing of her would you say you also have your green and black gear would you say like all of them are like cosplay inspired or is some of it just like the color scheme and you stick to like a certain like gear structure or like what is your like overall vibe you think with gear my first three I would say I was kind of filling it out so the green and black one is Shigo inspired loved it and then the pink one like I said was Melina the blue and or blue and gold I was gonna say blue and green because I was just looking at them actually on my bed uh the blue one is Vegeta inspired everyone think it's like Wolverine or something but it's actually Vegeta I should have added more white to it but I didn't think it through it's okay I feel like you can always tweak stuff too and like tweak your maybe just bring it into your like your next set of gear do you have any like visions or plans for your next set of gear maybe on the horizon I have a couple of ideas I love the Joshi style gear um like Billy Starks just recently did Mm -hmm. one and I was like this is so cute I want to do something like that I feel like it's fun it's different you are the second person this week where, where you're talking about Billy, like gushing over Billy Starks' gear because <laughs> it's just absolutely fantastic. Like, a, like I don't know how to explain. Like, the, the color scheme is just really cool and then it fits with her, like, blue and blonde hair. Like, it's just overall a vibe that I'm a big fan of. I love it. I don't even know how to explain it to, like, some gear makers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, I mean, unless you just send a photo, but. Yeah. True. like this but different yeah, right right <laughs> who else then from your perspective is like been really impressing you with their ring gear game or aesthetic in pro wrestling today jasmine allure's gear has been really cute lately i've been loving the like leg ribbon things mm-hmm. and it's so bedazzled in her boots like she just stands out and looks like a star i love it I've spoken with her and a lot of it's like Sasha Banks inspired too because she has like all those I, I don't know how to explain it like straps on there too which is really cool and it like you can do like many different colors with that too and you're a big fan of neon and Jasmine does do a lot of neon so that doesn't surprise me from that and I mean you faced her before too so I think that that's really yeah. cool <laughs> and I feel like when something I... go ahead Sorry, I was just going to say, when I recently saw her in Kelly, she has a green set now. And I'm like, yeah. with me and her ever tag, that looks so good together. Oh, I don't know what you're, we need a tag team name for you guys. Mm. Mm. She's top like tier. Mm. We'll have to think on it. Yeah. We'll have to get to get somewhere with this. I know. But I mean, another like aspect of your whole like look is your strong sunglasses game. So how many actually, how many actual shades do you own in your collection, uh, Gypsy? I want to say like I have 10 pairs of pit vipers. <laughs> I mean, is that, have you just been like collecting them for a while or is it just like, I have seen you wear it in real life too. Like it's not just with wrestling. Like I've seen you wear them too in like vacation spots. And I think it's really cool. You have a really strong, like sunglasses game. I just always thought they were fun. Um, one of my training partners, his name's Roland still shout out. He lives in England right now. So when he kind of moved, he like, let me adopt his pit Viper game. 
because he would always wear these beautiful gold and black ones. Mm -hmm. And I found out that they had green ones. So they needed to go with my gear. They matched. And I've always loved Joey Janela's kind of like glasses vibe. So I wanted something kind of my own. And Pit Vipers had something for literally every single one of my gears. They actually were nice enough to send me a pair to match all of my gears. Okay, So shout out to Pit Viper. Hashtag sponsored. Okay, girl, I see you. I see you. They need to sponsor a match of yours now next, I feel like. Yeah, you're, right. You're repping them always. Everywhere, all throughout <laughs> the Southwest. I know. And we were talking earlier, earlier, you classify yourself as a spooky bitch. So I'm very curious to know, have you ever had any like spooky or strange encounters in your life, like ghosts or otherworldly <laughs> stuff? It's funny because I have, but like I'm low-key kind of like, scared (laughs) because I have really bad dreams like I stay dreaming about it when it Mm -hmm. happens and I don't know if it's like subconsciously I'm still thinking about it but yeah one of my favorite times I would say when I was maybe about 12 I was babysitting my little cousin at my grandma's house and my grandma's always been like oh the like doors will close on their own or like the tv turns off and I was like grandma you're crazy like it's okay. (laughs) I was like, I don't believe you. (laughs) Cause I was really young at the time. I didn't want to believe that. And it was just me and uh, my little cousin in the room. All of a sudden the door just slammed shut and then swung wide open again. And I ran and kind of left my little cousin behind. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, everyone save yourself. And I booked it to my grandma and I went and told her what happened to like, make sure she was in the kitchen. And sure enough, there was no one in her room. And she was all, see, I told you stuff like that happens around here. So that was probably one that's always stuck with me. Yeah, I would have, I would have ran. Yeah. Your poor cousin. How old was your younger (laughs) cousin? Like two. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) To be fair, they might not have known like what was going on, like be able to comprehend it anyways, but just leaving them to as a ghost. Aw. Yeah, I feel so bad because we still talk about it now. She's, I want to say 16, yeah, maybe like 14 or something. So we talk about it now. And it's so funny. I'm I'm sorry. I'm like, I sacrificed you pretty much to Does save myself. Does she have any memories of that? Or is it just more like living vicariously through you in that memory? She doesn't remember. So it's only like what I tell her. It would be really cool if she did remember something. She'd be like, you, you remember that time you left me? defend for myself against the ghost I'm like oh I'm sorry that's her villain origin story she becomes a wrestler and like she's my huge rival Mm, there you go it's been written for years now in the making yeah long-term storytelling (laughs) now maybe you have maybe you haven't have you ever used a Ouija board no I I'm huge on like bad vibes and I feel like that's so easy to welcome in something like that I'm so. terrified of that Ugh. like I believe in ghosts and like we'll watch ghost movies but I'm terrified like maybe just because of the depictions in like the dramatic depictions that we've seen in movies and stuff like I'm terrified of the Ouija boards I agree I like I've seen them a couple of times like yeah. at friends houses and stuff and I'm like oh I just feel I feel the bad vibe I'm like take that to another room yeah, I was just curious because I know some people who have and like it hasn't been good experiences. So I just I never want to experience that myself. I mean, you do you, you know, <laughs> I don't want that. I have like it's like I'm just terrified of like bad karma or something like that. I feel like like bad energy, you'll just radiate it. I agree 100 percent. Like I'm still a baby witch in all of this stuff. It's still new to me. So I'm like, Fair. I don't want to do anything that's going to accidentally cause negativity or like chaos in my life yeah I completely understand that there and like I mean being a baby witch if you could maybe have any fictional or strange creature be your tag team partner for an evening what would you choose and why oh that's such an interesting question oh this is something I've never even thought about before I guess I've always just thought of like Atticus my cat being like my buddy in this because I've gotten him since I've been into this whole spiritual awakening thing so I've always just kind of thought of him in that position but I guess like I don't know 
Like there's bats, vampires, ghosts. Maybe it would be a ghost. I, would, I don't know. Probably bats. I've or always witch. really liked bats. Yes. Okay. I think that that goes along with a witch. Yeah. They're spooky. I feel like that, <laughs> that goes along with Halloween too. So I feel like if maybe you were to create like a gypsy Mac themed Halloween costume, like what would be in your starter pack? Definitely pit vipers. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, that probably, we would have to have a death card in there for sure. I feel like it would probably have to be something bright because I love my neon contrast with my black. I've been obsessed with the idea of doing like pink, lime green, and like a bright purple. So I feel like it would look something like that. Okay. I, I dig it. I feel like, I feel like we need the whole deck of tarot cards though, too, in some fashion. I mean, obviously the death card would probably be on top, but I feel like we need the whole array of cards. I need to figure out some way to keep it on me. Like I need, like, you know how people have like a a gun holster? I need a tarot card deck holster. Hmm. They have like card holders that you can use for like your ID or like your vaccine cards. There just needs to be a way to like somehow... Yeah. You know what? That's like genius. I never even <laughs> thought of that. Like, I, like one of those card holders, like, I don't know. You'll have to find something. Huh. I'm going to have to patent it, I guess. Yeah. I mean, tarot, yeah. tarot card um, holster or something like that. Yeah. I, I like that idea a lot too. I feel like then it's just right on you. Because sometimes you need questions answered now. <laughs> Now, have you ever like utilized your tarot cards in a match? Because I feel like you could just pull out the death card and like have your opponent like fall or something. Like it's like they're you're in, putting death onto them or something. Like in the ring, <sighs> kayfabe. We're talking strictly kayfabe here, but I would love to. I just haven't figured out a way to incorporate mm-hmm. it yet. I'm still trying to figure it out because that's why I need something to hold my cards while yeah, I'm then in you the room. Pull it out. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that would be so so entertaining, especially around Halloween. Like hmm, you got some time. So you got like five idea. months to think about it. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna have to call my gear designer too now. <laughs> Please, I think I would love to see that honestly. I think there's a lot you can do, especially with like your tarot card and like maybe even your glasses or something like that. I don't know. Well like I've always said I have to wear the glasses because my future is so bright because I can see yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your gear is really bright too, to be fair. True. The neon Especially aspects. the green one. Yeah. The green one is so bright. It is just like your future though. There you go. Now, would you say that you're one that has always been drawn to like horror or scary movies? Yeah. I was traumatized when I was oh, younger. Gosh. My older cousin, I was maybe about five or six he decided it was a great idea to show me The Exorcist and would always play scary movies. Oh my God. So, yeah. I've seen the original Exorcist. I think I was like 12, but not that young. Yeah, I blame it on him for my love of all things horror because I always thought he was super cool. And then he was like, mm-hmm. yeah, you want to watch a scary movie? puts on the exorcist i was traumatized oh my god what are some of your go-to like scary movies that you enjoy i love halloween i like the rob zombie one and the original ones but the rob zombie one i like that it kind of tells like the whole story on why michael is the way that he is I think that's really fascinating too. I always love like a lot of scary like movies, thrillers, like mysteries too, but like on the opposite side of that, like just in general, like what are some shows or movies that you enjoy just like just in general, horror or not? My favorite TV show is probably like American Dad and South Park. (laughs) I'm huge into comedy that I can just kind of put on the background and I'm not really like having to watch it. So I like that and Friends is another big one for me. I've never, I've seen like one episode of Friends. Please don't come at me, Gypsy. I'm so sorry. Oh no, it's okay. I I know a lot of people have seen it. I've just only seen the one episode. I don't even know the blonde's name, but I think she was in the hospital giving birth. I think that's (laughs) That's such a random episode. That's the only episode. It was just, it just happened to be on TV. That is like the only episode that I've seen. To be fair, it was like half of the episode. 
but I really need to get on the friends train. Everybody has seen it except for me, I feel like. For me, it's it reminds me of my mom and growing up because we watched it together. Yeah. So it's like my comfort show. I like, but I wouldn't necessarily be one of those people that is like, it's great cinema and everyone needs to watch it because I know some people are crazy like that. Yeah, too. And I know you enjoy your true crime podcast too. So we'll close out with that. What would you say is maybe the most memorable mystery or story you've heard on one of these podcasts? Probably his name is, I want, I believe it's Israel Keys. He was this serial killer that had no MO. His MO was killing people when he was able to just do it. He would bury kill buckets all throughout like the country and say he was on business here in New Mexico and he was around his kill bucket and he saw someone and had a chance, he would just do it. And he's only confessed to five murders, but apparently there's been more than like 10 and we'll never know because unfortunately he's a coward and took his own life. Yeah. How did they yeah. even catch him if he had no, probably maybe DNA or something. Was this on he Crime Junkie? Up. It was, yes. Crime Junkie is actually how I heard it. So if you get a chance, listen to that episode. It's really good. But he slipped up and started getting cocky with using mm. ATM cards and being dumb because stuff gets traced so easily. That makes sense. And a lot of like the ATMs have cameras now. And I mean, it's easy to track, and especially in today's day. So is it like a current, like within the last 20 years, I would assume within the last 20 years. Yeah, I okay. want to say 20, like 10, maybe okay. when they caught him. It was like pretty recently in the last like 10 or 15 years. Damn. I'm very very into like true crime and like crime drama I just know I have never really gotten into like true crime podcasts but it's kind of the same thing if you're just like watching it and like it's narrated in it so maybe I need to hop on the crime junkie train Mm. if you've never listened to crime junkie I like it because it's not like there's some podcasts where it's like and the guy walked up the stairs and like I'm all I'm gonna go to sleep yeah (laughs) it's fun it's like talking to your friend about this case that's why I like it have you ever listened to Bailey Sarian no I've not oh my god <clears throat> tell me about it she's great she's like uh she does her makeup while she tells you a true crime case and she's so much fun she's really funny and it's like you're just talking to your friend that's why I really enjoy those podcasts rather than the ones where it's someone just narrating the story now is the one with Bailey like you like visually too like on YouTube or is it like just audio? It's on YouTube or okay. they have like versions on Spotify. Mm-hmm. I listen to stuff at work so yeah. I get to listen to that all day but when I have the chance I like to watch her makeup too because it's super fun. Do you enjoy like any other podcasts or like YouTube content besides like true crime? I do like a couple of other podcasts. Um, well actually on YouTube too I like Good Mythical Morning. On YouTube. Yeah, I know who they are. Mm-hmm. They're fun. I they're nice to watch when I don't want to watch anything else. Right and, and Link, right. Yeah, yeah. They're fun. Check them out. I would if you want something just kind of that's not reality TV or like animation or anything. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fun. And what else with podcast? Oh, I love to listen to wrestling podcasts. So. Duh. <laughs> I mean, hello what are some of your there's a lot like there especially after the start of the pandemic like the rest I mean podcasting game just in general has become so saturated but like which within the wrestling genre do you find yourself like listening to right now my favorite is oral sessions with With Renee Renee. I love her yeah I feel like she's just so easy to listen to and she asks really fun questions so you get to know people on a different level yeah, that like goes beyond like just wrestling. Like it could be random things like TV shows or like random stories from their childhood. There's a lot of like really insightful stuff in her content. Yeah, I really enjoy her. Like your podcast actually kind of made me feel like kind of the same way. It's nice talking about me and not just like, oh, what's my life like on the road all the time. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I'll take that compliment gladly. <laughs> We will end it on that note. Before I let you go, though, Gypsy, can you please tell the listeners where they can find you on all your social medias? So my Instagram is the period Gypsy period Mac. And then on Twitter, it's just Gypsy Mac. And Gypsy is spelled G-Y-S. No, I can't even spell it. (laughs) G-Y. 
P-S-Y. Now you got me over. Everyone spells it with an I, so I have to make sure I fix it. Really? Like gypsies traditionally yes. spelled with two Ys. I don't know why these people do this to me. Like I'll see flyers and it's like an I at the end. And I'm like, okay, I guess. Your name we'll is like spelled there. traditionally how gypsy. I find that okay. I'm like, okay, Starbucks. I guess. <laughs> you also have some really cool shirts, though. Tell the people where they can Thank find you. those. You can just message me directly on any platform, or if there's a size that I don't have, you could get them on prowrestlingtees.com. Definitely. And Gypsy, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. And of course, I'm looking forward to spooky season needs to come sooner, honestly. Yes, we will definitely have to talk again around that time. Okay. Thank you so much again. No problem.